Welcome to another episode of Opal GT Power. In this episode, we're going to be removing the lower and upper ball joints on the suspension, putting on new calipers, and a new rotor. Goodbye. I'm going to take off the um, brake caliper. And the first step to do that is to take off this um, lower um, hose here, which I've already loosened, or this lower um, brake uh, line. Uh, just use a 10 millimeter flare nut and unscrew it. All right, so once you get that lower um, brake line off, I intended to plug this line, but unfortunately it's too tight and I can't plug it until I get the caliper off. Um, so what I'm doing now is there is a there's a soft brake line. Here, I'll move the camera in here. All right, see, there's a soft brake line right here, and here's a clip that holds it on. By taking that off, I'll get myself um, some wiggle room and maybe be able to um, get, this, get this line out of there easier. So I take a pair of pliers, grab at the end of that, and it'll just wiggle out. See, it's just a key. And once you do that, let's take a look at how this works. Okay, once, once you get that out, you got a little bit of wiggle room now. So now I can pull this, um, there we go. And now I can plug that leak. <clears throat> Let me go get one of my caps. I have the leak plugged with a rubber cap, so we're all good there now. Um, so the next thing is there are two 19 millimeter bolts on the back of the caliper. <clears throat> There's one. Uh, loft it. There we go. There's two. If you can see, here's the little support that holds it. That's a, that little key clip I took off um, is what holds this support on there. So remember the orientation here. I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts back in this. And I'm going to go ahead and put the clip right here just so I don't lose that clip. <clears throat> And set this to the side. Now the caliper will just wiggle off like that. Super easy. Sit him off to the side. This one is getting replaced with a brand new one, so we won't need it anymore. All right, I've removed the upper and lower cotter pins on the ball joints. So now I'm going to get in there and uh, release, uh, take off the nuts for them. So see if I can get a wrench on them. Let's try 19. Yep, a 19 box end works well, and let me get a hammer to tap it with. <clears throat> okay. Back and forth a little bit so I don't break it, and there it goes. Impact is always a great idea on bolts like this uh, because uh, studies have shown that, you know, people are always talking about using POR15 and stuff, but actual studies have shown that just simple impact force, just like giving a couple taps to something, releases better than any type of soaking with uh, any penetrant oil. So that's what I always use, is um, just a few taps to loosen something, and then I usually uh, slightly tighten it and slightly loosen it, and then I, I rarely break bolts using that method. Now I'm going to leave um, the nut on there for now because I might need to use that nut to help hit it out and free it. So I'm not taking it off all the way. Um, but now we're going to try and get this upper one. It looks like it might be a 16 or 17 millimeter. It is a 17 millimeter. <clears throat> so I'm going to sock it on that. Same thing. Uh, well, I accidentally removed this one all the way, but so I'll thread it back on slightly in case I need to hit it with a hammer. Except it looks like the threads are destroyed on this nut and won't go back on. So hopefully we won't need to put it back on. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these uh, two uh, um, 
I don't really know what that part's called, like a spindle connecting thingy that goes to the tie rod. It's got two bolts, one where I have the socket there, and there's the other one right over there beside the ball joint. So I'm taking those, um, those two off. <clears throat> Has a lock washer, or uh, this is regular washer. So set that down, remember where it goes. These are 15 millimeters. <clears throat> And I can't fit a wrench on that one. Well, if I turn this, I will. There we go. Now I can fit it. <clears throat> All right, got it. So now that'll give us a little bit of freedom here. You can see how loose the everything is now. Now you wouldn't want to be driving around on that, would you? Okay, so I'm gonna go get my pickle fork and I've never used one of those before, but we'll see how good it does at um, releasing these. So we're gonna need to remove the uh, lower shock um, attaching bolts right there. See, there's a, it's just a nut and a bolt, one on either side. So 15 millimeter wrench on either side. Here, I'll do that. And it's free. goes done and then lastly push up the shock and swing it over out of the way a little bit luckily this one is not a gas shock so it won't rebound to its last position so now we have a lot of room to try and start getting this off oh that one's already removed I didn't even have to do anything that's kind of scary Actually, that's really scary. Okay, so that one's removed. So now we just need to get this one off. Let's go ahead and take this knuckle off here. There we go. Swing it out of the way. There we go. So let's, let's destroy this even more. Thing is a bear. I'm sure I was doing something wrong and you guys watching will probably let me know, but that's all right because it is released. I just got to get that nut off now. And there we go. We got the whole spindle and everything off. All right. So now we got tons of room to work to replace everything. This is wonderful. So I'll show you what we got here. Now, if you look down here, you'll notice that the spring eye there is in the way of uh, this lower ball joint coming out. So the service manual does not say what to do. It just says to compress the spring, but it doesn't say whether or not you have to remove it all the way. So I'm gonna look at that for a little bit and figure it out. And we'll be back. All right, so what I ended up doing was taking off my sway bar, which many of you won't have if you're watching this video. Uh, and that allowed me to be able to move my lower control arm up a lot. I also removed the little tiny bolt that holds the spring eye on. Now, I have a lower ring spring, so there's not much spring tension on my, um, my opal here. Now, if you have the original spring, you need to be very, very careful, and I'd put a jack under this spring eye when you do that, because it will release a lot of pressure. Um, so, to uh, proceed with caution, I haven't ever done this in the car with a um, original spring, so it might be helpful to go look on the opalgt.com forum and uh, kind of uh, do a little bit of research beforehand. Now, with the lowering spring, this was no problem. So I've got, so I've got this uh, AutoZone um, loaner tool here. It's a um, ball joint remover and installer, and uh, I will go over how to how to put this all together to make it work. Um, this is my first test run of it. I haven't ever used one of these before, so. Um, there's a installer cup on the top here. There's this big C-clamp. There's a tube that goes over the lower part of the ball joint. And then there's a um, little lower um, pad here that this tightens down onto. And the idea is that this will push down um, through this control arm and go into this cup. So 
I'll get you guys up on the tripod and um, you can watch me see if I can get this to work. All right, let's give this a, a try. So uh, this is a 22 millimeter or a 7 8 inch bolt here and we're going to tighten it. So I'm going to hold on to the C-clamp here. I'm sure that's not what it's called. Now, uh, um, I mentioned that this was a loaner tool, and what that means is you go to AutoZone and ask if you can borrow a uh, ball joint installer and a remover kit, and uh, you'll have to pay, I think this one was $140, you'll have to pay $140 on your credit card, and uh, if you bring it back to them within 90 days, you get all of your money back. So it's like a free um, borrowing program. It's really good, and that's... Um, really really helps us uh, some a simple car folk out here okay it feels like it might be moving yep it's going through Man, that's easy oh my goodness that was easy all right, so now I'm gonna unscrew this. I've taken these out before using a hammer before and it takes, it takes freaking hours. This is, this is wonderful. Okay, so you can see this is uh, pushing out now. So I'll just grab it. Look at that, man, that, that just makes my day. So I'm gonna get this surface cleaned up with a little, little bitty wire brush from Harbor Freight. <laughs> I tore me off a piece of 300 grit sandpaper. Just gonna go in there and just give it a little quick once over. And that should be fine. And then clean it out. Nice and smooth now. We'll go get our new ball joint. Okay, what I've got here on this latex glove that is not on my hand is some grease. And I'm going to um, lightly lubricate um, the inner diameter of this, um, this ball joint hole here, whatever you call that. And then on the new ball joint, also going to put a little bit around the rim of it too, just to help facilitate installing it. I'm not putting a ton here. You just need just a little bit to let it glide. Okay, so now, Going to insert this through the bottom. There we go. So that's the trick. See, now we have it kind of set in there. You can see the orange above, so the little ring that holds on the boot is not going to come off when we start pressing this in. And uh, now we're going to take our tool. I'll try and show you a little bit more closely what we're doing this time. Now, this is not an uncommon occurrence, but um, Unfortunately, this universal tool does not work on the Opal GT to reinstall these. Um, unfortunately, this piece right here cannot fit inside of the lower control arm, and this is the reinstalling tool. So I kind of rigged up something here with some of the other parts. But anyway, I'm, I'm trying my best to see if this little setup I have here will work. What you want to make sure is that the ball joint is going in evenly. If it goes in crooked, it's you're pretty screwed. So just take it gentle and look at everything. And uh, you might see to the left over here, I actually have a jack on the lower control arm, and that is um, allowing this lower control arm to go up closer to the upper arm, and that gives me some more clearance from the leaf spring. That's where I can use this tool, quote unquote, properly. Oh wait, there we go. All right, now we got it evened up. I think that grease finally helped me out. Almost there. Okay, I think that's pretty well, pretty well done. I can get any more turnage on it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. 
Okay, so now I'm going to release the pressure on it. And while that's stuck. Okay. So now I'm going to look around it, make sure that it's even. No gaps anywhere. Looks like it's sealed up nice and tightly to me. Then we'll make sure that the joint moves freely. It does, we're good. <clears throat> and that's, uh, that's one installed pretty much, I think. So now let's do our upper ball joint. So first things first, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter wrench and a 13 millimeter socket. There we go. There's one bolt out. And there we go. Uh, there's that, okay. So here's our lower ball joint. Now, if you take a look here, you'll see that these bolt holes are offset. And that's how you adjust your um, camber on this car. So, uh, uh, from the factory, so pay attention when you're taking this apart, from the factory they are set with uh, the minimum positive camber. If you turn them 180 degrees, then it'll be set to a couple more degrees of positive camber. Assuming yours is a stock GT. All right, so we got our new um, beautiful ball joint from Opal GT Source. These are a great deal and very high quality. I think it was $49 for one, so not a bad price for a classic car. Okay, so we're going to have the thinner side, where the bolt holes are closer to us, facing towards us, like this. And that will give us the minimum amount of camber, um, or the most amount of negative camber, except you won't get negative camber, so basically. Alright, so I like to put the bolts in through the bottom, and the nuts on the top. It makes it a little bit easier to take them off, in my opinion. So, both of those. I've also replaced the nuts with a grade 10.9 um, M6 by, I don't know, M6 coarse thread nuts uh, with yellow zinc coating so they won't rust. Okay, so now we can tighten those down. Okay, now we'll check, uh, see that the, um, the ball joint falls towards the back of the uh, control arm. That is the correct position if you want the minimum amount of camber, um, or the maximum amount of negative camber, in other words. Uh, if you have it farther forward, then you'll get more positive camber, and that uh, means you installed it backwards, which is also fine if you're trying to go for that kind of alignment <coughs> and even. So that part's done. I'm also going to be taking my upper control arm off to adjust the caster, and uh, so I'm going to do that real quick. Now to take this off, this bolt is sometimes referred to as the, a bolt from hell. Um, it's very difficult to get off because sometimes it'll rust inside of a, the sleeve here, and um, I highly recommend um, using an impact on this. If you just use a regular wrench on both sides, you're really liable to twist this thing off or hurt yourself by straining too much. So if you have access to an impact, um, use it. It'll really help a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Mine's easy because I um, put anti-seize on everything last time when I assembled this. Um, so no big deal there. Okay, so first thing that comes off is a toothed washer on the uh, left side. So I'm going to put that down. Now I'll start pulling the bolt through. All right, we just lost our rear caster washer right here. So I'm going to set that down. 
On the left side is our thin caster washer, which goes on the front from factory, that is. Now we're gonna take off our bolts here. So the bolt's off. Notice there's a tooth washer on the rear end of it. So set all that down. Here's the control arm. So there's also this little rubber guy right here on the control arm that didn't come off. Sometimes it does, make sure it goes back there. And uh, now adjusting the caster where I want it is pretty simple. Mine is a race car, so I'm trying to go for the for the most caster angle as possible. So I'm putting both of the washers that I pulled off um, that were inside the control arm on the rear side, and that will increase the caster angle on this side of the car. So let's see if that'll work. That's, um, that's the theory on how it's supposed to work. So slipping the bolt through, put the one washer on, put the other tooth washer on. Now let's try and slip this. Oh man. So put the um, tooth washer back on and find where I put my, that nut. Okay, we got the nut. And let's torque it back down and see if everything looks right. Oh, that's not the right size wrench, is it, Kyler? Oh, heck, there it is. Then take a 19 millimeter wrench right here. Now this one I will torque to spec in a moment because it is kind of an important, but it looks like we are okay. Now I'm gonna try and get my lower leaf spring back installed. You can see it's got quite a bit of tension on it, so I'll need a jack to lift it into position and try and get the bolt through. Now I probably, this is probably gonna be, well actually, might not be that hard. Okay, yep, just lower the lower control arm into place. Jack it up a little bit and help me out. I need a screwdriver to line this hole up. Oh, perfect. That's going to be easy. Now I guess just got to find the bolts that goes there. Okay, so we're going to put our bolt back in. I'm able to get it started on the other side, but this side I was able to get it in. So knock it through. Now on this side, I'm gonna have to figure out how to line it so it'll go in there. Um, maybe a screwdriver will help. Right, I got it. I uh, just had to be a little bit creative and use a combination of the jack and uh, screwdrivers and such to kind of help um, encourage it to go inside. Um, wasn't too hard, it just took a minute. So let me get a 13 millimeter wrench. Over on this side. Let's see, I do this with one hand. Okay, so well, that's mostly tight. I'll tighten it the rest of the way off camera. Um, so we're pretty much ready to start putting this all back together. We just got to do the brake wheel bearing cap here. Just use a screwdriver usually for me and just twist it, turn it. There we go. Ready? So then we'll take that. Um, okay, got out the cotter pen. Now use a 24 millimeter and take the old castle nut off. Should just. Okay, all you gotta do is press down on the shaft and it'll come straight through since we already got all the bolts off and everything. So there's what we what it looks like with the backing plate and the spindle there. And then you can take a look at your shaft and make sure that everything looks good. Um, this one's got nice, a lot of new grease on it and a lot of old grease. I'm not gonna deal with wheel bearings today even though I have it apart because I don't have any wheel bearings to replace, replace with. There's the back. 
Everything still moves nice and freely, so we're good. Uh, so the next thing to get this rotor off, we gotta get these three or four triple square bolts out. And I should have the proper tool. I think it is that one. Yep. So that's what a triple square bolt looks like. You can get these at Opal GT Source or maybe the auto parts store, I don't know. I think they might be using some modern European cars. But So I'm just gonna take these, unscrew those four bolts. So, and got those bolts. Now that one needs to come out a little more. Looks like this one does too. Okay, so now the rotor comes off of the hub. There's our old rotor. It's actually not in that bad of shape, but I figured while I have all this off, let's replace it. Side's done. Got brand new calipers, brand new ball joints, and I think everything's good to go.